All right. So thanks everyone for joining in. A lot of people tried to join in. I was telling Jose, like, you know, like uh, some people are getting booted out in the online version of the meeting. And hopefully we will have no more people coming in because the, the physical location is, is, is already booked up. So anyway, again, uh, thanks guys for, for joining. So this lender meetup is brought to you by uh, my company, HHS Capital. I've been investing since 2003, went through the market cycles, and you know I made money on the way up, made money on the way down, and made money again on the way up. So it's great. Real estate is good, uh, provided you know what you're doing, and financing is a very crucial component of that. And that's why um, you know every uh, third or fourth Wednesday of the month, you know, we are doing our lender meetups. And every uh, lender meetups, we invite a new, a different lender. So this is a great opportunity for you guys, not just to network, but definitely to meet those other types of lenders. I mean, for example, um, when was this? It'll be like uh, three months ago, right? We got uh, CIC Financing, which is a nonprofit lender that can lend up to 80% of your project cost. It's like hard, well, this is like a 5% interest, but it's like hard money, but 5% interest. It's, it's, it's crazy, you know? So there are different lenders like those that a lot of investors don't know or are aware of, and it could change your business dramatically once you, once you find the right lenders for what you're trying to do. So um, on bigger pockets, I launch a goal, you know, uh, of making one million dollars in the next 12 months to go joint ventures with bigger pocket members and uh, Those JVs can be any of the following we can fix and flip a house together We can fix and you know and, and then rent to own if you have a wholesale deal We can help you sell it or vice versa, you know if you have a hot deal and you need money You know I can work with you. I can lend you the money uh, or Jose can lend you the money, you know, so whoever, right? If, if you can invest your time, money, or credit with us, then yeah, we can do a joint venture, okay? So the current properties that we have that, uh, you know, that we currently have that are uh, joint venture with, with BP members, okay? Uh, all the way north in Antioch, all the way south. Um, I even forgot one, actually. Um, so anyway, all the way west to, to Plainfield, and I'll quickly go through with this just so that you guys can see, you know, the different properties that, you know, the types of joint ventures that we're doing. And, you know, this is a joint venture. So, so this is not just for me, this is also for you guys, right? So if you want to make money in real estate, some of you here are beginners, you know, never done a deal. Some of you have done a few deals. Well, you want to do more deals? Well, do more deals with me. Help me achieve this goal and we both make money right so everybody likes that we all make money right okay cool so and Jose right here will, will help you make make a lot of money uh, with the business line of credit all right so Antioch it's a fix and flip you know uh, that uh, there's the address right there uh, we acquired it for 150 repairs of 40,000 our profits going to be 42,000 uh, BP member that we work with is Dale from Lake Bluff Illinois okay so See, there's a lot of people trying to, to, to join in. Um, so that's just an example, right? Uh, it, we are also doing some lease options, okay? So option price of 220, we acquired it for 162, repairs of 5,000, uh, rent of 1,900. Uh, Rajesh from New Jersey is actually listening right now. Uh, you know, he is our joint venture partner on this one, okay? So. Rent to own is huge. That's a huge uh, market, but I bet you, 99% of BP members don't participate in it. Okay, so, well, I could. It, it's it's good in a way, you know, but it's um, but there's a lot of money to be made, you know. So each rent to own that we have, we make fifty thousand dollars. Okay, so. We have a development project in Ukrainian village. We will convert this ugly two-story building in here to a four-story uh, building uh, with three condominiums and a retail space at, at the bottom. Um, out of my $1 million goal, this is like 30% of it, <laughs> so, which is cool. And, and it came again you know, through the help of a, of a BP member. So, and what's good about that is that 
not only are we going to make 300,000 one time, we will make $48,000 per year because we will lease the first floor to Starbucks. So Glen Ellen, it's a, it's a, um, it's a fix and flip. You know, so we acquired for 132, we have a 45, we're going to make 32 grand, you know, in it. Uh, my VP member joint venture partner is Ian based in Bangkok, Thailand. So we have some Asian money, you know, coming in also. So um, in fact, Ian wants to do more deals. So you guys listening and here, you know, if you have a property that, you know, that's a great deal, you don't know what to do with, I can joint venture with you. Okay. So we can put up the fund, even do the work. And then we split the profit, you know, we do a um, profit uh, split arrangement. It's on a per deal basis, okay? So not only do you guys come here to get money, you have the opportunity to joint venture with, with me and with each other, you, you know, um, and let's make money together, right? Chicago Southside, you know, we did buy a house in Chicago, you know, in, in Chicago Southside, and we already sold this one. Uh, we're just uh, closing on it. Fine, we only make two thousand dollars, but we help a seller solve a headache property, you know. Um, and then now he can move on with his life, right? So um, that's in Bishop in uh, Chicago, South Bishop Homewood. There's a there's a wholesale deal. Uh, BP member help me is Jay uh, from Chicago, Illinois, and this one we're going to sell for fifty. Uh, this one we're going to just wholesale it. Villa Park rehab deal, we acquired for 80, repairs of 13.5, we're going to make 20,000. This is on the low end of our rehab, this is a townhome. Again, the BP member involved here is Ian from Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, playing field is option, um, we're going to make 30,000 on this one plus $500 a month cash flow. I have two BP members who joint venture, joint ventured on this one, Christine from New York and Daniel from California. All right, so. If you want to join venture, send me an email, right? I will call you. Um, you know, those of you listening on the line, you're not from Chicago, okay? Uh, this is this offer is available to everyone. Um, so email me, give me two weeks notice. You know, I want you to come to Chicago. You know, um, there was this gal from BP who saw my so many postings on Digger Pocket, and she said. I have four hundred thousand dollars. I want to invest it with you. Okay, I want to, I want to do something. I want to send you. I want to send you my money. And I said, no, I cannot accept your money. You know, I, I don't work that way. Fine, it would be easy for me to do that. But if I were you, I will want to know whom I whom I am investing with, and what I'm investing to. Right. So come to Chicago. We'll show you the different. Uh, areas that we have, the A, B, C, and D areas, we will show you our properties, you know. Um, if we like you and you like me, then maybe we will do a joint venture together, okay? You'll meet me, my team, and my resources, you know, my hard money lenders, other, you know, even my private lenders, mortgage brokers, and real estate agents, okay? So, um, enough of that, let's go to the lender presentation. So. Let me put up, uh, went through the PowerPoint market cycle here and, and um, you know, so I made money on the way up, made money on the way down, and made money again on the way up. So it's great. Real estate is good. I'm sure that a lot of this information is going to be covered. It's going to be covered, okay. but more importantly, then they can ask questions. All righty. So, cool. let me yeah. do. Okay. All right. I forgot to get the Oh, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, Jose is an expert on on financing, right. basically. So, you know, I mean, this is the yeah, first yeah. time I've, I've heard of this business uh, lines of credit. And as long as you have a 720, uh, 720 credit score, you know, and an LLC, then you can do this, bottom line. So, right. but Jose will we'll, uh, discuss all the details. I have my own questions too, and I'm sure you guys have your own questions. So, um, go okay. ahead. Cool. Well, my name is Jose. I'm based here out of Chicago. I just press this button. Yeah. I'm based out of Chicago. The, we actually work hand in hand with H&HS uh, Capital with Wendell. And the name of the company that we represent is Midwest Corporate Credit. And that's uh, we're headquartered out, out in uh, Oak Brook Terrace. Um, who we are is that we're actually small business lending and credit consultants. 
So we typically deal anywhere from small businesses all the way up to real estate investors, nonprofits. Um, it doesn't, it, as long as there's an entity, we can actually help you obtain, including startups as well. So we actually assist our clients with obtaining lines of cash and credit through business, whether it be a church, a uh, nonprofit, and again, like anything that, uh, even a startup, okay? So we do offer many industries. There's really not a, not a, there's no cap on the type of industry that we can, that we can lend. We use many resources such as banks and also private investors. So with what we do is that there's no upfront cost to any of our consultations to figure out how much capital you actually qualify for. We do anywhere from 50,000 all the way up to $150,000 that we can, that we can uh, provide. So one of the biggest things is that obviously many people here know what business lines of credit are, but at the same time, not many people know the benefits of it and then how important it is to separate your personal debt from your business debt, especially being a, a, a real estate investor where a lot of what we've seen is that a lot of real estate investors, they tend to put a lot of that debt that they have from, uh, from their fix and flips on their personal credit cards or even using their own personal money where, God forbid, something happens, then, you know, that starts to affect their personal credit at the end, then it's not a good thing. So this is exactly what we'll be covering in regards to how our business lines of credit work and how it's going to benefit your business. So uh, first of all, you know, you want to separate your personal debt from your business debt. You want to establish a financial track record. And then you also want to build your business credit profile. Okay. So one of the biggest things that our banks look at is through our FICO scoring system. Uh, personal credit bureaus and how and really how FICO scores really determine your individuality and on your business. We they usually use a TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. And the way uh, the way that it's structured is that typically banks look at 35% of the payment history. The current debt, uh, total debt, is usually 30%, and then the credit history is 15%. Now new credit is 10%, and then inquiries is 10%. So a lot of people tend to have a, a misconception that inquiries play a big part, but not really. So what I'm going to cover now is that usually whenever you're obtaining a loan, by the way, or any type of credit, personal credit card, even though, let's say, you have $10,000 available on your credit card or even fifty dollars or $100,000 available on credit, if you're using your personal credit, then you can only use up to 30%. If you use over 30%, it starts to affect your your uh, your your, FICO, your credit score. So um, there's typically three business credit bureaus. There's a Dun and Bradstreet. That's what uh, that's what that's how the uh, business credit is built. The commercial Equifax and the corporate Experian. So that's one thing that we also look at. Um, basically, how the business cures rate your business is through corporate compliance. Whether you currently are paying your, your debt, if you have everything in line, how the length and type of the business, but with our banks and our, and our relationships, this actually doesn't play a big role on it. And I'll explain a little bit later. So there's simple steps on how to obtain fifty to $150,000 in unsecured credit. So one of the biggest things is that we require no financials, we require no collateral, and really, it can all be converted into cash. And we show you exactly on how to do so. Because even though with business lines of credit, what you'll get is um, like a business like a business credit card, it's not going to reflect on your personal credit. It's just going to go towards your business credit. More importantly, we show you on ways and how you can use different methods so that you can have physical cash and not just have a, a credit card that a bank would use. So we do require. Um, you know, we do, the first step is that you would fill out a pre-qualification form or an application. Pretty simple application. All it requires is just your name, your business information, your business name, and then that's it. And then in addition to that, we do require for each and every one of you that's interested to submit with that application their personal credit report. And we, uh, we prefer totalcreditcheck.com because it's more accurate. So... Once you submit the application with your totalcreditcheck.com 
a personal credit score or a report. Then we'll look at it, and our underwriters will actually analyze the report just like the banks do. That way, before we submit it to any bank or any of our lenders, we already know what to look for. We'll let you know exactly how much money you'll qualify for. And then before the banks even put any inquiries in your, in your account, we know that you're going to be qualified. So as soon as, as soon as we approve you and we give you a number, we can pretty much guarantee it 99% of the time. Um, once we do that, the next step is that we'll do the initial consultation. If you qualify for 100,000 or 150, which our average is $87,000. So once we give you a, a pre-qualification number, what's going to happen is that you'll let us know whether you would like for, for us to proceed. And if you so choose, that's when we go ahead and submit it to anywhere from two lenders all the way up to maybe five lenders, depending on how much capital you're looking for in the project that you're looking to fund. Or even, like I said, if it's a business, we can pretty much provide as much as 150000 um, After that point, you'll let us know. As soon as you get us uh, the authorization, we'll get to work. And just so you guys know, there's absolutely no fees up front. And there's no fees until we actually provide the capital and our banks actually provide the capital for you, which will be at the end when you start getting all these lines of credit or these credit cards in the mail. Uh, when you do that, there is a basically an 8% success fee. That would be our fee to get to obtain, to helping you get the, uh, the lines of credit. So if it's 100000 that that we provide for you, then your fee would be 8%, but it's paid based on how much capital we actually give you. Uh, after that, one of the things is that we do guarantee a 0% interest for a minimum of 6 to 13 months. After that, it is revolving lines of credit. So typically every single year, our banks um, increase the lines of credit and our lenders increase the lines of credit depending on whether it's a private investor or a bank. Um, at that point, you, you're ne you never have to pay any additional fees after that. We only It's only a one-time success fee. Um, <clears throat> we do have uh, what, what it says here on step three where we have a 70% success rate with our clients. What that means is that typically when you submit to us the, uh, your credit report and you submit the application, we'll let you know up front how much you qualify for and if you qualify. If you don't qualify and we know that you're not going to get the capital that you're looking for, we'll let you know up front. We're not going to submit any application unless we can 100% guarantee that you're going to get the capital you're looking for. So. Um, you know, how to obtain the cash credit immediately for your business. If you're seeking to build like business, a, a business credit, then that's great. If you're looking for just operating capital, if you're a business or even a startup or a nonprofit, as long as you have a minimum of a 720 FICO credit score, personal credit uh, score, then you qualify for, for capital. Now, the main difference is that every single Let's say we provide $100,000 and you qualify for $100,000. What happens is that because of our program, you can literally use all $100,000 and it's not going to reflect on your personal credit. It's just going to go towards your business credit. Um, it doesn't, you don't, like I mentioned, you, don't, you guys don't require any personal, like no collateral, no financial. So even if you're not showing any profit in your business or anything like that, it doesn't really matter. As long as your personal credit score is a minimum of a 720, we can pretty much provide capital. Um, okay, so one of the biggest things that you guys will learn in working with us is that we not only just provide the capital, but we do guide you throughout the entire process. What that means is that many of you are looking for not just business lines of credit, but physical cash, whether it be you know to buy a house or, or, or an investment. So we show you different methods that we use in order for us to get that money from the lines of credit into actual physical cash. So one of the ways we use is, is uh, like for example, balance transfer checks. Not many people know how to use them, but we'll show you that with our, with our banks and with the lenders that we use, there's literally ways where you can still get a 0% on those balance transfer checks. You write yourself a check uh, for your, you know, to yourself. And then let's say it's $15,000, and then you have $15,000 in cash, where you pay 0% for a minimum of 6 to 12 months. If it's, a, if it's a fix and flip, you know, obviously you're looking to fix it and then sell it or do whatever you need to. 
within, if you're looking to do that within six months or even a year, you pretty much got capital where you didn't pay any interest apart from obviously the 8% that we originally charged. Um, so if you do have, if you guys are interested, what's going to happen is that I'll be, um, I'm going to send out an, an email with the application online where you can submit the application, including with your personal credit score or your credit report. We prefer uh, totalcreditcheck.com. And then when we do that, again, there's no fee. There's nothing. There's no fees up front. All we require is just the application. And then we just need for you guys to submit your credit score. And at that point, we'll analyze each individual report. And we'll give you a consultation on how much capital we can provide. So that's it. I know you guys are going to have questions, but I don't, let me see. I don't know how to do that. OK, then. Um, like, so do you guys have any questions? And then maybe I'll just reply. I'll just repeat the question here and hope that people can. Uh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm Daniel. I actually have oh, a few oh, questions. Yeah. Hold on one second. Wait, how do I? See, I'm a Mac person. I'm not. A... <laughs> yeah, you can work. Hold on one second, you guys. What is uh... his volume? Okay, um, what was, uh, do you guys have any questions online? Uh, yes, I, I'm Daniel. I actually have a few questions. Okay, uh, go ahead, and then uh, I'm going to repeat your question just so everyone in the room can hear. Sure. Uh, so regarding the 8% the application fee, uh, how would that be paid? Would that, can that be paid, for example, let's say that I get a line of credit, a credit for 50000 so that would be a, a, a fee for 4000 and can I pay that fee within the 50000 that I'm receiving, or how can that be paid out? Yes. So the question was that for the 8% uh, for the eight percent fee, which we call it an 8% success fee, the reason we call it an 8% success fee is because you'll only get charged the 8% based on the total amount of actual credit that we provide. So having said that, many of our clients actually uh, pay that eight success fee with the actual credit lines that we provide. You have an option of whether you want to pay it off you know, out of your own check or out of your own account, but we usually recommend you know, just taking it off the actual credit lines because it makes much, it makes much more sense since you're not going to be paying any interest on it. Right. And okay. the reason why I chose working with Jose um, is that when I was researching this business credit lines, uh, there are some who charge a fee upfront, even before they give you the money. And and you know there are a lot of scams out there like that. You know I said no, no way will I pay you two thousand dollars. You know uh, with the promise of, of giving me a hundred grand, right? But they only work on a success fee basis. So if they don't deliver, you don't they don't get paid, right? right. But if they do, what's eight thousand dollars out of a hundred thousand, right? That's that's better than paying hard money twelve percent. So yes, right. Um, do you, I know that you guys had a question? Are you so how long are you going to go? So the, yeah. So the question is basically, um, you know, how how long is the loan for? And and how is it scheduled? Yeah. So the biggest thing is that this program is not a loan. You know, this program is not a loan, and what that means is that we're not gonna, we're not going to provide money to you, and then in the hopes that you'll pay on a monthly basis. What we provide is actually we actually uh, we're the we're the matchmaker with the with our banks and our lenders. So what happens is that you'll get the capital from banks like Chase, Citibank. Um, in some cases, it could be private lenders, and we'll, we charge the 8% uh, success fee because you go on your own on trying to get these loans of credit is more of a hit and miss. More importantly, it's kind of like going to court. You can either go to court on your own and see if you can get away with whatever you're trying to fix, or you can go with a lawyer that knows the ins and outs. That's why 
we actually consult you with your credit report first before submitting it to the lender. Because if you have certain things in your credit report and you don't know about, what's going to happen is you apply to a bank and they'll just deny you and they won't tell you why. Now at that point, you're just, you just took a hit on your credit report where if you keep doing that over and over again, you're not going to get money eventually from anywhere because banks are going to be scared because there's a lot of inquiries in your, in your, in your personal credit. Right. We don't, yeah, we don't require any financials because we do our own underwriting. So we, that's why we require for you to first submit your credit report with your application so that we can underwrite you on our end before we look before we send you out to, uh, to our lender. So pretty much we know exactly what the banks want to see. Um, we know exactly what they want to see. So when we look at your credit report, we know right away from the beginning if you're going to be someone who can make some money. Uh, we can give you money or we're not going to give you money. So when you come to us, Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, so like I was saying, the banks are, we're going to look at you the we're going to look at you the same way uh, the banks are going to look at you, uh, except when you come to us beforehand, we know right away if it's worth taking you to our banks or if it's not. Because if you try to do this on your own, the bank may deny you, but they're not going to tell you why they denied you. They're just going to say, hey, you were denied for this. You were denied. Unfortunately, we can't approve you at this time. But if you come to us beforehand and we give you the pre-analysis, we have banks on the East Coast. We have banks on the West Coast. We have banks in the South. We have banks here in the Midwest. We've got relationships with all these banks. We know exactly what all these banks want to see. So when the business owners come to us, we can be the matchmakers. So if you're in the East Coast, uh, we'll match with our East Coast banks. If you're in the West Coast, we'll match with our West, with our West Coast banks. So the, the terms of the loan. So the biggest it, thing is. It becomes dependent on the bank, the bank, the bank that you guys work with. Or the lenders so to give you an example, if someone has a 750 credit score, they come to us, right? We're going to take them to, let's say, four different banks. Each bank approves them for $25,000. It's going to be a line of credit that's going to come as a business credit card format. For the first six to 13 months, uh, each of those banks is going to give you 0% interest. Thereafter, the rates are going to vary just like any other credit card from 8.9 to 16.9%. Um, what a lot of our real estate investors do, though, is if you have good credit, the banks will send you what's called balance transfer checks. With these balance transfer checks, since the, since the card is a corporate card, you can write that check to yourself, and you just have to pay a 3% transfer fee. And now you're going to have, you know, uh, let's say $25,000 at 0% for 15, 18 months because you just cash that balance transfer check. You do pay the 3% transfer, but when you're, you know, adding up the numbers, the 3% to have, zero, to have the 0%. Um, and a lot of our small real estate investors and uh, – the reason we go to multiple banks is so you don't have all your eggs in one basket. You have five different banks who are competing for your business. So if you have a $25,000 balance with this bank and the 0% intro is about to end, well, guess what? One of the other banks we got you approved for is now sending you another 0% transfer offer. So what you're going to do now is you're going to transfer the $25,000 to one of the other banks, pay the 3% fee, well, guess what? Now you have 0% for another 15 months. Then you can just transfer back and forth. And it doesn't report to your personal credit, so your personal credit's not affected. So essentially, the banks that you guys um, kind of shop for, and each of them are going to have to hit on your report. Well, we don't so shop actually, for. We don't shop for because that know would be. We know we know all of our banks, and we know exactly what they look for. So if you want to tell them we match you based on you know. Yeah, you can repeat the question. So the question was, um, if we shop our clients around, um, and what I was explaining is that. We don't shop them around because we know which banks we're going to take our clients to based on the strength of their credit. So what we do is we match them based on, you know, the strength of their credit, the history, along with what kind of business they have, and what part of the country they're located. Um, and I'm not sure if Jose got to explain this. Uh, over the last uh, seven years, we've been able to raise $50 million for business owners all across the country. Is there a, is there a, a preference to the corporate structure with a sole proprietorship, LLC? <coughs> S type corporations, C type corporations, shareholders, investors within the corporation. That's a good question. So the question was: There's is there a uh, does a company have to be structured as an S corp, LLC, or C corp? Um, there is no. Uh, you can have any kind of entity set up. Um, obviously, the the better ones are going to be if you have an LLC, an S corp, corp, 
a sole proprietor, we still get you financing, but it always looks better if you have an actual corporation. Um, and as far as age of company, we can work with a lot of startups who are just incorporated last month or let's say yesterday, as long as their credit score is stronger. The, the ones who benefit the most are companies who are a year old, two years old, because in the lender's eyes, you look more established. Banks are gonna say, oh, you've been someone who's been in business for a long period of time. Um, so these are all the little, little details that a lot of people don't know before they go to a bank. Uh, and then just a fun fact, everybody, 90% of uh, applicants get denied from banks, especially for business financing. Because uh, if your bank is, if your company's making under 2 million, or under 2 million, 10 million, you're considered a small business, and they don't really, they're, you're not a big focus for them. So. I'm sorry, uh, my question was, can I ask that for the leech lender is it a big push for? Absolutely, absolutely. So you're getting different credit cards, essentially. Right? Absolutely. Each bank is going to require an inquiry on your credit to determine if you're worthy of financing. Yeah. Um, but that's why we have you send us your credit report first from Credit Check Total to then consult you and say, are you someone who's going to be, who's going to qualify? Because obviously if you don't qualify, we're not going to take you on as a, we're not going to, Take you to our clients, but if you do qualify, you know we'll then take you to each of our client, uh, each of our lenders, and each bank will inquire in your credit report. But we already know you're going to get approved. Anything you've seen so far on six months in your uh, corporation? Mm -hmm. um, what's been the loan uh, amount that you have seen so far? So the question was. Uh, Based on a, if a company has been incorporated for six months, um, what are the loan amounts and how much were we able to get them approved for? Um, it really comes down to the strength of credit, uh, how strong your personal credit is. Because if you're a company that just incorporated and your personal credit doesn't really have strong accounts, you're going to qualify for a lot less. You know, if you if you only have ten thousand dollar, no, I'm sorry, if you only have like a five thousand dollar credit card or on your personal. Banks are not going to think you can manage twenty thousand dollars, but if you're if you're an applicant who comes in and you've got a twenty thousand dollar credit card, you know fifteen thousand dollar credit card, and your credit card debt is very low, well, guess what? You're someone who's responsible. So no matter if you incorporated six months ago, they're going to give you financing because they know based on your credit history, you're worthy of handling large amounts of money. And you've been one of the lowest Yeah. Exactly, fifty to one hundred fifty thousand. We we can do less. We try not to go under twenty thousand, just because it, it doesn't become worth it at that point. But we we can do you know uh, twenty five up to one hundred fifty thousand. If we work for a partnership, for example, if we have three partners in a LLC, which score is taken? If so, is the least the smallest one or the that you like an average? Okay, so the question was. Um, how would we? How would you raise money with a partnership where there's three partners, um, based on you know who? Ha the way we would look at it is we would have each of you guys obtain your credit report from Credit Check Total, um, and then you send it over to us. And then based on the strength of who has the better credit, we would say use the one who has the better credit. Now, if you're someone who has, you know, uh, three entities, three companies, right? We can raise money for each of those companies. Um, within a period of like six months. Because keep in mind, the accounts don't report to the personal credit. Um, so we'll be able to take you, you know, raise the first 100 grand with one of your companies and raise another 100 grand with another company and another company and so on. So you would just bring... Yeah. So essentially, you can apply, one person can apply for the, her company, mm -hmm. and essentially it would be using the three credit scores individually. Yeah, so it would just be... So if it, it would just be, we would be applying with whoever has the strongest credit. So if say you had the strongest credit, we would, you would, you would, we would be applying for you and on behalf of the company. And then the score is the only one you used, or you guys use other parameters of under like MCI? We use everything, everything. Everything. The same thing as the banks would use. So at the, you know, say you don't decide to move forward with us for whatever reason, the least you got was you got a good understanding of how the banks are going to look at you. Um, and the biggest thing, too, is people say, well, why can't I do this on my own? Uh, the reason being is because if, when you go to a bank, they don't just offer one one product. They offer multiple products. And not only that, but a lot of banks report their, pro their, their business products to your personal credit. So it's not, um, 
it's not valuable to use those products because the minute you just you start putting a balance on it, your personal credit starts to get affected. So that's why with everything we do, we make sure nothing reports to the personal side. Um, and then it allows you to build business credit. Yes, yeah, sorry. All right, so um, I have two questions. The first question is that, do you prefer certain names over, over the others? For instance, if I have Asher's Construction versus, let's say, Asher's Dream. So <laughs> Asher's Construction, obviously you know it's a construction business. Asher's dream can be anything. Right. Yeah, no. You prefer certain names over another. No, that's a good. The question was as far as you. <laughs> that's a good question. We never had that before. <laughs> no, the que the question is if uh, whether your business name will affect how much you get approved for. Um, a few years ago, back like in 2012, uh, we were seeing that that was the case because uh, we would have a lot of real estate investors come to us, and they, their companies would be like you know, short sale investor, LLC, or, you know, real estate investor guru. And a few years ago, that would have that would have gotten you more denied. Um, so, yes, you know, try to stay away from names that sound like investor, investment, things like that, uh, just because it, for them, they may consider you as high risk. But uh, as, a, as far as a constru construction business, that you'll be fine with that. Right, but, yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's a good question. It's the truth. Yeah. All right, so second question. Yes. So... <clears throat> You mentioned that the business has to be like two years or older. It doesn't have to be, but that's what banks do. Like to right. see that. And I saw on the slide there's like a shelf for. Yes. What's the charge for the shelf corp that you guys have? That's a good yeah. question. All right, so we don't really offer shelf corps anymore. Okay. We did in the past. We did use to offer them, um, but we found out that it wasn't very. Um, the people who were selling them, it, there wasn't a big difference as far as buying the shelf corp and using it. A lot of people do tell you, oh, you got to buy a shelf corp, but that's just, anytime people are asking for upfront fees, we got to be careful because they're, right. they're, they're just trying to make. So we don't offer the shelf corps anymore. We had, we did in the past, uh, but we don't offer them anymore just because they're not, it doesn't make a big difference uh, to the financing. Plus it requires a lot of paperwork to get it registered with the state that it's, right. it's not, not recommended. So. Now, what happens if, um, <coughs> let's say, your credit is not good, but you know someone with good credit, can you make him an officer of your NLP and then have him qualify? Absolutely. Yeah. So, so the question was, what happens if you don't have a co-signer, but uh, grandma or mom has an 800 <laughs> credit score? <laughs> 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 yeah, so so absolutely. What you would do is uh, you would just add them on as a member, or you would have them uh, fill out what's called the corporate resolution, uh, and uh, you would be giving them authorization to borrow on behalf of the company. Uh, and we can, again, since it doesn't report to the guarantor's personal credit, uh, it's valuable as long as you make, as long as you use the money responsibly and pay it back. Uh, you know, you're not going to have any issues, but, uh, you know, if you're not going to, if you're going to be making late payments or, or, you know, defaulting, you know, obviously like any other loan product, you're going to have issues with, uh, with the guarantee. So, yes. And what if, uh, the company is not based in Chicago? Let's say I have a company in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have a company in Las Vegas. We're doing some stuff over there. I mean, I'm not, I'm not bringing that company here to do anything, so I don't need to. Mm -hmm. Here. Nope. Uh, we can. The question was, if you have, if you're a business owner, you have another company in a different state. Uh, you, we can still raise money for you. Um, I just recently raised eighty thousand uh, dollars. She was a masseuse. Her business was in Los Angeles. Her mom was in Missouri. Um, some of the uh, business credit cards went to her mom's address. Some of them went to her business address, uh, and we were able to, you know, to raise the money that way as well. So. No, there's not a restriction. As long as you form filed in Illinois or you can form filed in Illinois, you'll you'll uh, you'll be in good good position. Yeah. And, and um, the second question is that if you had a series LLC, mm -hmm. will each LLC be able to 
Yeah. So the question is, because a lot of real estate investors, in order to uh, protect their uh, uh, properties, they put their uh, their properties in a, in a series LLC. Um, as long as each of those series is in, uh, incorporated in good standing and has an EIN number, uh, we can definitely raise money for each of those uh, each each of those companies. Um, we do have a limit of up to three, just because at, at three companies, you know. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so it is up to three different companies. No, of course. Four hundred thousand at the moment. Yeah. So, and uh, we also have uh, it's a it's an open checkbook line product um, for business owners who can show receivables. Um, with that, we can actually get you thirty to fifty thousand dollars in a checkbook line. Uh, it doesn't come with zero percent interest. Uh, the rates do vary between six and twelve percent. Um, and for that, you would have to have uh, strong personal credit. We will, we do require documents for that. You have to have good cre strong credit, receivables, uh, and a uh, a balance sheet of your company. So, yeah. So, and and like I said, we we do get a lot of a lot of our majority of our clients have been real estate investors just because they always need money. You always need money. I don't know if you guys are familiar with another group called Renata. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, there's a guy named Bob Tierney. He came through our program two years ago. We raised a good amount of money for him, and that's why he went back to Renata and started pushing corporate credit. But remember, those who teach don't do. We do, they teach. So they sell products. They sell, like, yeah. they, I think they do, like, uh, uh, credit repair and all kinds of uh, things like that. So we get a lot of people who send us business from there. Do yeah. you guys have any other questions? Or? So no, what can you possibly do with the money? What do you do? Well, you for anything else or just um, real estate or? You can use it for whatever. That's a good question. Yeah, yeah. The, the question was, uh, you know, what can you use the, the, the lines of credit for? Uh, and the answer is you can uh, use it for, you know, it's, it's really up to you what you use it for. But as long as you, you have to make sure, you, you know, you just pay the money back. Um, but it is up, up to you for whatever you use it for. I'll give you an example. So uh, two years ago when properties were a lot cheaper, a lot of our we would get we would get real estate investors out of Ohio, and out in Ohio a few years ago, you people were buying houses for eight thousand, ten thousand, fifteen thousand. So when they came to us, we were able to raise you know a hundred thousand. Uh, they would request balance transfer checks from some of these banks. They would have a, they would cash the check. They would acquire the property within two or three months. They would sell it, pay back the money, or refinance it, and uh, you know. Uh, make a profit on the deal, so, um, yeah, but. So after the 18 months, what else happens? The interest go up? After the 0% after the interest period, is, uh, rates are going to vary between 8.9 to 16.9%. Uh, but what I explained was um, if you use the accounts responsibly, you can get balance transfer checks. And that's really where it's very valuable for real estate investors because now you can use it like a checkbook line. Because now you have access to checks, to cash, to, to do whatever deals you want. And uh, as long as you balance transfer the money back and forth between these accounts, you'll always only pay like 3% uh, transfer fee and then 0% for 8 months, 12 months, 15 months. Uh, so the biggest thing is just you know managing it, managing it responsibly and then uh, just building a really good uh, relationship with that bank. So in a year from now, when you need more money, you can just tell the bank, hey, I need more money. And they're going to say, oh, sure, we'll give you another ten, fifteen thousand. 15000 Here you go. Uh, we've gotten some business owners approved for up to $50,000 credit cards, up some up to $60,000 credit cards. Uh, so it just depends, again, on, uh, on on a few different variables. That, uh, and then there are questions that people are typing Sorry. in. So it's okay. So let me just let's read through the questions that you guys asked. Um, Someone, someone just comments that they can't hear you. Yeah, the way we got involved with this business, we were buying real estate too. Okay, so the first question from 
tie, can we pre-qualify with an existing LLC, then create a new LLC once we decide to open the credit? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the question is, can we pre-qualify with an existing LLC and then create a new LLC once we decide to open the credit? Um, so pretty much I think what she's at, what the person's asking is, uh, can they spill out the pre-qualification form, we give them a pre-approval, and then they can go ahead and go set up a new company that they're going to use to, to get the financing, from what I understand. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. So, I mean, yes. So, yes, you, that, to, to answer that question, yeah, you can do that. Okay. Next question. Do you have a recommendation which state to incorporate in if business will be done in Illinois? I, I think that was just, uh, yeah, I would just incorporate in Illinois. Yeah, Illinois is expensive, man. I don't know. <laughs> it is. For now, let's see. Yeah. All right, same question. Same question. Okay, that's the question. Will one company always be pre-qualified by multiple banks so that the balance grants are often available? Yeah. Um, so uh, when, when, uh, when the client gets pre-qualified, we don't take them to the banks yet. Um, it's just for us to see. And then uh, if they decide to move forward at that point, and they would need to fill out the full application, and then we would then get them approved for the business credit cards, and then whichever company they use is where the balance, they're going to get the balance transfer check for. Right. All right. From Jason D., can you qualify if you are just starting your LLC and have no business history, since you don't use the sales force anymore? Yes. Yes. Uh, so, that, yes, you can um, still qualify because... Mm -hmm. You, we're going to use your personal credit to get you approved for business uh, accounts. And then once those business accounts report to your business credit, that's how you're going to build business credit history. So that's how you really build. It, just like personal credit, when you're 18, you have to open up a few credit cards. You have to let them report. You have to use them, pay them back, use them, pay them back. It's the same concept for the business, uh, for your business. You have to set up, open up business accounts, which are going to report to your business credit. So in the future, if you go to a bank, they're going to say, oh, wow, you've already, you've already shown that you can use money and pay it back. Use and pay it back. What's, what's your success rate again? It's usually over 70%. 70% success rate. So, yeah. No, I was, yeah, I was just going to say, you know, we, if the client doesn't qualify, we're not going to do them a disservice and say, oh, we can do something for you. Because right. we're, we're in business, so we're not going to get paid. So we're not going to get paid. We're not going to take them out. My question is, can your company, um, once once you establish credit and have those in front of credit, can your company purchase your personal debt, bring up your personal debt so that would be... Um, That's a good question for your accountant. I can't, I can't give you the exact answer for that, but... Have you seen it done? Yeah, a lot of people will do that. Sometimes... Okay. You want to repeat the question? So the question is, um, if they could... Uh, what kind of personal debt would you like? Uh, Car, car, so the question was, if once we get them approved for business accounts, business credit cards, or the business accounts, can they use that money to, to, to pay off some personal debt? Uh, I told them that that would be a question you can ask your accountant, but have I seen it done? Yes. A lot of people will transfer the debt from their personal side to the business temporarily and then, you know, pay it back, obviously. So, yeah, that's, you can do that. Yeah. What's the website or email address to get in contact with you? I will uh, put it out there, you know, at the end of the presentation. Here. Yeah, we'll send the we'll send the link out personally to everyone that's attending. Um, again, it's going to be the pre-qualification link, and it's going to be for HHS Capital, um, and we'll include the application. And we just need the uh, you know we just need a, a copy of your personal credit report and that should be good enough for us to at least know how much, we, you know, we can qualify you for. And like, you know, Francisco had mentioned, the worst that can happen is that you at least know what the banks are looking at when they're analyzing your, your credit. Yeah, because once we respond with the, uh, we call it the recap, we're going to go over 
credit history, the age of your credit profile, how much credit card debt you have, how many inquiries you have, um, have you opened up any new accounts recently, and we'll kind of explain what each bank, what the banks look for in each of those categories, so at least you get that kind of information. Yeah, so, so if you guys want to apply, uh, you can go to lendermeetup.blogspot.com and then scroll all the way down to the bottom. So you will see the actual application form in there. Do you guys have any more questions? Yeah, um, with the money, um, is there a limit to how much you can withdraw from your account? If you can take all 100000 out at the same time, you know, you have to That's a good question. So the question is, uh, is there a limit on how much uh, of the funds you can use right away? Um, there is no limit, but what we recommend for you in your future and, you know, doing business with those banks, we don't recommend that you, you know, take everything at once. We recommend that you slowly, you know, use the money, pay it back, use the payback, just because uh, you don't want to use the money and then carry a high balance for a year. Because then the banks are not going to, when a year from now, they're going to say, well, you're carrying all this balance. So uh, what we recommend for history-wise is, you know, use the money, pay it back, and then it's still it's revolving, so it's not like it's going to go anywhere. The, the accounts are still going to be set up. So as long as you use it, pay it back, you know you'll be in good shape. There is no limit; you can certainly use it all. Um, but as far as our, our recommendation, we recommend you use it, pay it back, and use it, pay it back, so that way you can build that good uh, the track record is what they're going to want to see. Yeah. And then there's a the question. Um, it says, "Can you apply with the C corp also?" And the answer is yes. You can also apply with the C corp. No, uh, it's a private company, um, and uh, the way we came about is uh, we used to do a lot of real estate, but we were doing a lot of real estate investing. Uh, we went through a similar company, and uh, they charged our front fees, and uh, they didn't really provide a, a good service. So over the last seven years, um, we we required a bunch of different banks' uh, information by trial and error. So we, we've, uh, you know, pretty, we've just gathered a lot of data on a lot of different banks, who the underwriters are in these banks, uh, and uh, we, we pretty much, uh, that's how we are, we're able to match our business owners because, you know, we have all that information. So the way I, I try, try to tell people is, uh, you know, if you do it yourself, uh, it's like uh, shooting at a dartboard with, with, your, with a blindfold on. You're going to be able to shoot, but you're not going to wear it. Coming through us, you know, we'll be able to give you bullseye because, you know, based on all the clients we raise money for, you, you, you come to learn the trends of what gets you denied, what gets you approved, what they look for. So coming through us, is, you know, the success rate is uh, you know, very high. Yeah, so the question is, can you qualify with a new LLC with no history or credit? Uh, the question is yes. Uh, the, re the, the, answer the, is the answer is yes. <laughs> Uh, and the reason being is uh, because the banks are going to rely on your personal credit uh, because your business doesn't have any business credit. They will pull your business credit just to make sure you don't have any liens or anything on your business credit. Uh, but they will approve you based on your personal credit. And again, as we explained, the reason a lot of business owners come to us is because the accounts that we get them are going to report to their business credit and not their personal credit. Uh, and then that's going to help you establish your business credit. Uh, by the accounts reporting to your business credit and not your personal credit. So, um, what happens then they get a default? So, you, you, you run up you know, 50000 out of the credit, never pay a dime. So, uh, you're, you say it's not against your personal credit, but obviously you're guaranteed. Yeah. So, then they, uh, they would have to file a uh, lawsuit. Pretty much. Uh, so the question is, is that if you use, let's say, you use the fifty thousand, uh, and you don't make any payments on the money for whatever reason. Um, the question, the the answer is, uh, you are personally guaranteeing the funds, but they are not reporting unless you default. So if you do default, then that's when you, the uh, default will report to your personal credit, and they obviously will try to collect their money. Uh, they will try to collect their money. Uh, just because it, it's per, it is personally guaranteed. So although it's unsecured, it just means it's not really collateralized by anything physical. Um, they do want it. They do want to make sure that they're getting paid and that, that you have their guarantee that you're going to pay back the funds. 
So, so I mean, the follow-on to that is how do you, at what point does it come on your personal credit? I mean, so say you have, uh, say you're late paying. I mean, it's a credit card, you can late pay, right? Mm -hmm. You get a 90-day late pay. Uh, that doesn't go on your personal credit? A 90-day late pay will go on your personal credit. It will report. So what, so what doesn't go on your personal credit? Uh, you making your payments on time, it won't go on your personal credit. Well, what about, yeah. how about the outstanding um, balance? You have $50,000 in credit, different credit cards. Sure. Those would all show up as? Um, Only the one you, the, that you, you know, the one that you, if you default on all of them, obviously they're all going to report to your personal credit. So, but if you're only defaulting on one of the accounts, that one is going to report, report. But if you do default and you're not making your payments, it is going to report to the personal credit, unfortunately. It is going to. So, 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 so as long as you're paying, then let's say you, you have $100,000 total, let's say five credit cards or whatever, Four right, or, or five different lenders, then it will not go, it will not appear on your personal credit. Right. right. right? It's not going to show up. None of the, those accounts are going to report to your personal credit. So they'll be invisible. Like, they're not going to show up. Uh, they'll only be reporting to your business credit profile. But if you obviously do default, you know you're not making your payments. Uh, the banks are gonna, they're gonna want to collect their, fine, their their money, and uh, you know they're gonna do what they have to to get their money. To, to get paid. So all negatives reports to your personal, all positive reports. That's correct. That yep, that's absolutely correct. Yeah, so the question is if, uh, yeah, that's a good question, if someone had a bankruptcy like seven years ago and they've been working on building their credit from that seven years, we have been able to get people financing as well, but it's just not as much. Uh, so, so the biggest thing is once you, get, once you go through a bankruptcy, you have to start building credit after that. You have to start find, you know, finding a way to build credit uh, because that's what banks are going to want to see. They're going to want to see since the bankruptcy, has anybody else lent you money? And if they have, have you been responsible of paying it back? So we have we have been able to raise money, uh, but it's for the people who have built history since that bankruptcy. To add to what you just asked, mm -hmm. only because I didn't know the report, but they say you need to see how long since the people filed bankruptcy and that they did uh, on the residential side, something they had guidelines for. It needs to be at least two years. From your district, is there similar characteristics with regards to your form of lending? Yeah. So the question is, uh, you know, um, is the amount of time since you can go up, begin raising financing since you have the bankruptcy, uh, how soon can you go and begin applying for financing? Uh, and the answer to that is, uh, you know, if you have a bankruptcy or if you've had a bankruptcy, you know, we can apply you. Um, but unless you have recent history or, you know, after that bankruptcy, we're, it's not going to, we're not going to get you approved. But uh, if you have built, some, you know, say two years later after your bankruptcy, you've gotten, you know, a four or $5,000 credit card or you got it up to 7000 you know, or something like that, we're going to be able to work with you now because now you're, you're showing again that you're someone who can use money and pay it back again. So it really just comes down to what you've done after that bankruptcy. Have you? So we would just measure that, that within a year I can bring myself a question of 20. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and people are going to take them three, four years to do this back just because of the manner in which the debt is being made. Right. Well, that's why I'm saying it's all about history. So what have you done? You know, having a high FICO score doesn't mean anything. You can I mean, be, only because we have had you as a rule of thumb with mm -hmm. regards right. to a, a right. almost guaranteed approval based on that. Yes. Score. Right. Okay. So yeah. That, that, that's why for me it was kind of right. hard for me to get a grasp on that, knowing that there's, that, there's gotcha. a lot more to that. You're right. Absolutely. If something can just be narrowed down to one thing. Right. No, and that's right. true. So um, I think uh, what he was saying is right. Is correct. If uh, if you have a 720, does that automatically automatically mean you're approved? Uh, and the answer is is no. It doesn't mean you're automatically approved. Um, and that's why you come to us, because we're going to go ahead and review everything. We're going to look at the accounts. We're going to look at the inquiries. Uh, for example, you can be someone who has, you know, a 730 credit score, but your credit to debt utilization is at 48%. Right away, you're going to be subject to getting denied right away or uh, lower approval amounts. So there is a 
lot of other variables that the banks look for, and that's why the business owners come to us because we know all of those different variables and uh, how to, you know, explain to the client, you know, pay down this amount of credit card debt, come back to us, and then we can go ahead and take you, we can go ahead and, and, and raise the money for you. So, yeah, that, that's a good question. There's other variables that uh, we look for. Yeah, so let's say you have this Pretty much use the first four clips and then you pay it off within 12 months. And now after 12 months or 13 months, you have that real line of credit. You feel like you, you, you have, you know, that I, for some reason you want to either cancel that credit, is there any type of cancellation fee or is there any type of inactivity fee? We don't use it. Um, you use it if you don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is uh, say a business owner gets approved for 100 grand, they use the money for the first uh, zero percent intro period for the twelve months, they use the, the hundred grand and then they pay the money the money back after the after the twelve months. And for whatever reason, they want to cancel the accounts that we got them approved for. There are no cancel there's no uh, cancellation penalties. Um, although it, it it wouldn't make sense if you canceled it, but there are no cancellation penalties uh, whatsoever, and there are no uh, yearly fees or anything like that associated with it. Um, and the biggest thing is, you know, they, you come to us because of our knowledge of the of, of the smaller lenders, the regional lenders that, uh, you know, you're not even used to. Obviously, we all know the, the major, bigger banks, um, but there's also a lot of the smaller banks that uh, lend out, um, and that's where, where we come in, is we have, you know, access to those different banks. Yes. Yeah, so the question is, uh, is there an income to debt ratio? Um, that it, they do. The banks do look at that. Um, obviously, if you have, uh, you know, very high mortgage, if you have a lot of student loans, if you have a bunch of, you know, uh, car loans, that is going to affect the amount of month, the amount of financing they offer you, based on you know what your income is, because uh, they're going to ask what your what your uh, What's your personal income? What's you know? What are you? What you bringing in? What are your assets? What are your liabilities? Um, so that does come into play. Um, but again, the biggest thing is uh, you know uh, the strong personal credit. You know, not showing that you have a lot of. Uh, the biggest thing they, they care more for is the credit card debt, and the reason being is credit card debt is the hardest to manage, and the majority of Americans live uh, live um, live off of their credit cards. All they do is pay interest on their credit cards. So that's why they scrutinize that the most. And that's why if you go over 30%, that's why they penalize you right away because they, they don't feel that you're someone that can manage it. Um, the, 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 yes, uh, school loans or mortgages and car loans, those are collateralized. So they know, you, you know you're going you're gonna to pay, you have to pay those. The credit card debt is more, uh, they look at that. So let's say we uh, submit an application mm -hmm. and everything's on the up and up. Companies there credit is there, and there's no, like, negative support. Mm -hmm. So what's the turnaround time? Sure. So the question is, if they submit an application, um, what's the turnaround time to get a decision? Uh, the answer is, so if you submit an application on Monday, uh, it takes us about an hour or two to underwrite and evaluate. We'll send you a pre-approval amount that day, explaining your credit, your weaknesses, strengths, uh, and then we'll also attach a full application which that full application uh, is going to be if you decide to move forward, that's what you'll need to fill out. And on that full application, it's going to be about six pages. The first page is uh, all the information on the business. The second page is all your personal information. And then the other pages are a few other documents we need, such as uh, articles of incorporation, uh, our agreements. And then if you submit that hypothetically, send it, send it back to us Monday that same day, from Tuesday, it'll take us seven, the first seven days, it'll take us, seven business days, it'll take us to get the decisions from the banks, uh, approvals, pendings, or denials. The next seven days will, will take us for you to actually start receiving the, the, the business credit cards in the mail saying you've been pre-approved for 30, you've been approved for 30,000, 25,000, uh, and so on. And so, then... So seven business days plus seven business days again, or seven calendar days? Uh, seven business days. Seven business. So the first, it's seven business days for the decision, uh, another seven business days to actually receive the cards in the mail, 
And then we send you an invoice, which is due a following seven days. And you can pay us with one of the business credit cards. So it's a total about a two to three week period is what we're looking at. Uh, the question, yeah. The question is if uh, once we give the pre-qualification, do we provide what banks we go to along with uh, what the interest rates are? Uh, the answer is no. We don't provide the banks we go to. Uh, we just provide you with a pre-approval amount. We explain to you that you will get 0% interest for, for the first 6 to 13 months from these banks. Uh, and then thereafter, we do explain that the rates are going to vary between 8.9 to 16.9%. Uh, and the, as Jose touched on earlier, um, since they are, they are going to be business credit cards, um, because a lot of our real estate investors can't show receivables, um, we'll give you about eight different methods that you can liquidate the business credit cards into cash. Uh, and the more popular one that I like and a lot of our investors like is the balance transfer check method uh, because you pay the less you pay less uh, less fees uh, and it's a, it's a more you know lucrative uh, way to liquidate liquidate the cards. Hmm. Any other questions? Yeah, I have a question. Everybody's thinking. Like, yeah, I'm thinking. I'm actually get a question. So that. I was actually just going to ask that question, how do you monetize those credit cards? Because um, obviously um, credit is different than cash because you don't have it in your bank account. You can do it through the funds and you can get like you make payments well, you know, but you can't make personal payments with a credit card. <clears throat> but um, so your balance transfer idea though is good, but only after you've established yourself and you begin to get those offers and then credit or request those offers. That doesn't come out of gate. So what's another way that can be used to get the cash credit So the question was, uh, as far as the business credit cards, how do you monetize it and uh, how do you begin to utilize it right away? Um, the answer is, if you have strong credit, uh, you're going to get those balance transfer offers right away. You're going to be able to call the banks and say, hey, can I get a balance transfer check? They're going to say, sure, here you go. If your credit's not that strong, it's going to take you, you know, a month or two for you to show, hey, you're going to use it, you're going to pay it back. Um, and the biggest thing, too, is uh, that is the, the, the best way we recommend it. Uh, we have other ways that we show people how to liquidate the cards. They do come with fees, obviously. Um, it's the cost of doing business. Um, and uh, we'll give you those different uh, explanations, you know, if you go through our program. But the biggest one for real estate investors is the balance transfer tax. Uh, but how will the balance transfer check work? If I think based on this question, okay, so you got this $20,000 um, okay. credit card in the mail. You don't use it. Can you request a balance transfer when there's no balance? Absolutely, because you can, yes. Yeah, so, so the way you would request a balance transfer check is since the cards are commercial business credit cards, you would be getting a balance transfer check. They'll send it for your business, and now your business will be paying you personally, an employee, uh, a balance. And then you would cash the check, and then the business would pay the 3% fee. So you personally can cash the check. Does that make sense? Yeah. Even though there's no balance here? But yeah, because the, the, com the company doesn't have a balance. You're, you're, well, it could be the company is paying yourself as a, as an you're paying yourself as an employee for the services or something that you did for the company. So, that, mm -hmm. so you since it's a commercial account, you're gonna be able to pay yourself personally. You're gonna be able to write the check to yourself and go ahead and cash it. And now the business takes on that balance from you personally. Yeah, just like a personal credit card. There's two personal credit cards, one that zero percent interest on balance transfers. Although you don't have the balance of that new card, mm -hmm. right the balance transfer is still there and that new card. So the yeah exactly pretty much the commercial one would be assuming the debt for the personal so you would just write the check to yourself. Um, I don't know if you send you any examples of what they look like. Um, I don't think we can. Okay, we should have bought those. So how is that different than any other credit card you receive from the mail for your business? Um, the difference is you don't know if they report or not to your personal credit. You did not know. So the ones you receive in the mail for your business. <laughs> That that's obviously going on your business credit, and if you as a your 
Well, the ones you get in the mail, you don't know personally if they're going to report your personal business credit profile. They won't tell you that until you get approved and look them. And then you see a report on your personal credit. So, because like I said, a lot of the lenders, you know, they report to your personal credit. Uh, that's just the way to even if it's a yeah, even, even if it's for business purposes, they'll report it to your personal credit, unfortunately. And that's that's the problem. That's that's why we don't none of our lenders we don't there's no it's uh it's it's counterproductive for us to report to your personal credit. I think we already answered. Well it'd be an issue. The question is will it be an issue if you live in uh, one state but want to do business in another? Um, there's not an issue at all. Um, as long as the company's in good standing, uh, there's a lot of uh, you know wealthy business owners who have uh, live in one state and have businesses in other state as well. So, then the question is, uh, the question is, what is the frequency of payments? If I draw 20k from my line of credit, when is my first payment due if the rate is uh, zero percent? So. <laughs> yeah. So the so the answer would be um, you would pretty much pay ten percent of uh, of, of uh, the balance. You'd be paying around you know two hundred two hundred dollars per month. You're not paying any interest, but two hundred dollars will go will be applied to the principal, uh, and you would pay pay it normally um, once a month, just like a regular uh, business uh, personal credit card. Um, and like I stated, uh, what you could do is if you're only using twenty thousand and we got you for sixty thousand. Once the zero percent offer ends or is going to end on the twenty thousand, you can now ask one of your other banks for a balance transfer, and now you just simply transfer that twenty thousand to one of the other banks uh, and just pay that three percent fee. Seven twenty credit score is that a middle score, high score, or low score if I were to put a number? So the reason we say seven twenty is because it kind of allows us not to deal with anyone who doesn't qualify underneath that. Um, so the 720 score, we want to see all three credit bureaus, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. That's another good topic I'm going to bring up. Uh, the reason we look at all three credit bureaus is because if you're in the West Coast, the banks pull from Experian, TransUnion. If you're on the East Coast, they pull from Equifax, TransUnion. So if you're in the Midwest, they pull, yeah, TransUnion. So that's another big reason I didn't even explain. That's why people come to us is because we play musical chairs. If, if uh, we know how to apply you based on you know your credit bureaus and where you're located. We know on in the East Coast the banks are going to pull from this credit bureau. If you're on the West Coast they're going to pull from this credit bureau. Um, so that's another factor that goes into play. Where it's not we're not just applying you. Uh, you know there's a lot of consultation that takes place where we're matching you with these uh, um, with the banks based on a, a bunch of different variables. So uh, the uh, the credit bureaus uh, are important, and that's why we use we use Credit Check Total also because it's owned by Experian. It only costs our, our clients a dollar to, right. to verify. If they don't qualify, cancel it. All you paid was a dollar. Yeah. If you do qualify, we'll have you leave it open for uh, so for, for 30 days so we can monitor your credit throughout the process, and then you cancel it afterwards. So that's why we use credit check photos. It's very, mm -hmm. very accurate. So if you're on credit, I don't know, if you're still just on credit, what do mm -hmm. you think you guys need? Um, the question is, if, uh, if if you submit a credit report, how how recent does it have to be? Uh, we recommend it at least be 30 days old. Um, anything over than that, we don't want to look at because we don't know what's happened within that 30 days. Um, and then uh, try to stay away from the free credit sites because uh, it gives a lot of people illusions that they have 800 credit scores. And then when they pull it from Credit Check Total, it's like a 720. So that's how we use Credit Check Total because we get paid based on our performance, so we have to make sure the information is accurate, so that's how we use uh, credit check total versus credit karma or free credit score or any of those other credit check sites that are not accurate. Credit check total. Credit check total. Yeah, and then uh, uh, another good one is uh, Experian.com uh, or CreditReport.com. Uh, those are all very accurate uh, uh, credit checks that you go to. It's okay. We don't really use it. Um, another thing with credit check total, it's very organized. If you go on there, you can, you can read everything. It's very organized. If you go to like Equifax and all these other ones, it's very confusing and it just it takes too much time to review. Um, the question is, do you provide services to set up a corporation or can you recommend someone? 
Uh, we don't uh, we don't provide that service, but we do know people who do that, so we can definitely recommend you um, to set it up. I would recommend you do it yourself, so that way you learn. Uh, you don't have to pay anyone ever again. Uh, plus, it's fun, and uh, you'll learn something. You know, you, you will learn something by doing it yourself. So, and like I said, it's just an alternative finance. We don't only work with real estate investors. We, we work with all kinds of business owners. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Damon John from Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. So uh, he has a university uh, where he charges people 5000 10000 and 15000 when people pay for $15,000 consultation with him, one of the places he recommends them is to our company. Because uh, when he does the seminars, he talks about corporate credit and how to build it. But he doesn't, those who teach don't do. So he refers them to us, and we do the work for the client. So, it's, uh, so that we get a lot of business from him as well. Not him personally, but it's like chief of, it's chief of staff uh, who runs his uh, organization. Um, and we work with a lot of, a lot of uh, people who refer us business. So it's, uh, Business we do pay referral fee. Uh, you have to go to Mr. Wendell right here um, for hosting this event, but uh, we do have referral fees, and uh, we, can, we can custom. We can get into that maybe on another webinar or something like yeah, that. Yeah, if, if, if you filled up the uh, yeah, there, we'll, yeah, we'll definitely. And, uh, um, we do a lot of uh, custom customization. And, uh, it's like I said, it's, it's very valuable. Um, we we've been able to provide a lot of value from business owners all across the country. Um, LL Cool J always wears the Stefano hats. We are to do Stefano. We've raised money for the Stefano company. Um, just all kinds of businesses. We've done a lot of businesses. You know, because they all need finance. Every business owner needs finance. And then some business owners, they all they focus is on their business. They don't do anything else. Um, so that's why they come to us as a professional service. It's like saying, since you guys are real estate investors, you'll get this. Well, well I can do this myself. Well, I can rehab my kitchen myself too. But it's going to take me a lot of time. And time is money, and it's going to take me a lot of errors. Or I can just hire a professional who's going to come get it done for me very good, quickly. And uh, uh, even though I have to pay, it's going to be done correctly. So, uh, in the old book terms, so right down here, yeah, right down the street, yeah, right down the street. So, good area. Do you guys have any other questions? <laughs> Right away, right yeah. away. Go to lendermeetup.blogspot.com. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And so, make sure that everybody here has a, you know, yeah. that we fill, can answer. Fill, fill up the, uh, the questionnaire if you want to. Like Jose touched on earlier too, um, a lot of real estate investors they start off using their personal credit, and that's that's bad because once you need financing, you know, you're, anytime you're over thirty percent, it'll drop your score by twenty to hundred points. So credit card debt is really, you know, it'll it'll make you look really bad if you go over thirty percent utilization. So if you do have personal credit card debt, keep it under thirty percent. All right, no more questions. 21, 25. All right, so um, thank you, Jose and Francisco, for your, uh, you know, uh, you guys coming here. So why don't we give these guys a round of applause? Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, so, so again, guys, so if, if you want to get up to $150,000, go to lendermeetup.blogspot.com. And, um, you know, so I want to help you uh, get started in your real estate career. So uh, let, let's, let's join adventure and uh, let's, make, let's make money together. Bye now and have a nice day. <laughs>